now's the time to have the conversation about drug facilitated assault because it's never the survivor's fault. Whenever I hear stories of women and men that have been affected, I immediately get a pit in my stomach of helplessness. And that's why I continue relentlessly pursuing NONAP because that's my way of relieving that pit and saying, no, I can do something and I will and I am. Good afternoon, my name is Donya Sherman and I am the founder and CEO of NONAP. NONAP is a napkin that is able to detect rape drug presence. All the individual has to do is take a drop of their drink and place it on the loading area. And if there's drug presence indicated, there'll be a clear and concise color change in the viewing area. The name NONAP actually stands for the napkin that knows. NONAP is sanitary, discreet, portable, and gender inclusive so that anyone can have access to it. The night that I went out with my friends to a club, when I had come back from the bathroom, if I had dropped just a little bit of my drink onto a no-nap, it would have prevented me from getting drugged and waking up naked in a hotel room alone, scared. It would have saved me. My hope for no-nap is that in the future, we're able to empower individuals to be safer in social settings so that no one else has to say, me too. Being a Toyota mother of invention and be a part of such an amazing community of women that are championing issues that they're so passionate about, it's an absolute honor. Hello everybody, I'm Athena Jones. I'm a national correspondent with CNN based here in New York. Joining me now is Danya Sherman, founder and CEO of NONAP. What a fascinating pro product and an inspiring mission. Let's dive right in. Thank you. Now, I understand that the, the, the idea for this product came about because of a personal experience. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, while I was studying abroad in Spain, I had become friends with one of the international students, and we were socializing one night. My drink was laced, and the situation was exploited. And it was only upon returning back to the States and sharing my story with close friends did I find I was not alone. And it was in that community of women and men that have similarly shared experiences that I knew I had to do something about it, whether it started off for myself as a great way to gain closure and, and create change around an issue that personally affected me and has grown into something that has joined the greater movement of individuals saying enough is enough and something has to change. So it's a brilliant idea, but transforming an idea into an actual product can, can be a struggle. Uh, talk to us about what, as an inventor, it's taken you to get to this stage today. Has building this, this, this product, NONAP, been a lesson in adversity? Oh, very much so. Um, I take a great amount of pride that NONAP is completely self-funded. We have done over 10 new venture competitions and pitch competitions. As a female going for venture capitalist money, it's extremely different than a male entrepreneur. And, and there are studies for that, and we're very cognizant of that. Um, but there have definitely been a lot of learning opportunities along the way through our development. I've built an extremely competent team that have really helped bring my vision to life and, and we're working to combat an issue that affects millions internationally. And you've also helped spread the word yourself by being bold and approaching actors and others. Tell us about that. <laughs> so um, I live my life, thank you, I live my life by something I call the Ashton Kutcher 30 seconds, um, which is that at the Forbes 30 Under conference, I ran into Ashton Kutcher. And a little known fact is he's a venture capitalist that really is passionate about combating human trafficking. And there is an intersectionality between human trafficking and rape drugs. So I approached him tell, and told him about my company um, gave him my business card, don't remember the conversation, walked away. Um, and I didn't receive any email from him, which is totally understandable from someone that approaches Ashton Kutcher. Um, but I was going through my Facebook page, my own personal feed uh, a couple months ago and saw that A Plus had created a video about my company and Ashton Kutcher had shared it. So it was a very funny full circle, um, but he's awesome and so 
She has if, a, if you're watching Ashton, thank you. <laughs> she has the boldness and confidence that it pays. Now, NONAP uh, tests for many of the most commonly used so-called date rape drugs. It's the only product that can detect so many, such, such a breadth of these drugs. Tell us how it works and how you came up with the technology, and will the product ever be able to test, I guess, all of the drugs that could be used uh, to, 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 to take advantage of someone? Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the parts of our mission for NONAP is to educate. And one of the things that I, I always need to stress is that there's no such thing as a rape drug. There are drugs that side effects, especially paired with alcohol, are beneficial for exploitation. So really, any drug can be used, and we're targeting drugs that are commonly used. So for example, our product tests for rohypnol, and we'll be publicizing a list of drugs that our napkin tests for, as well as sensitivity, closer to our launch date. You said you want no to be distributed like condoms. You can look at it, it's just like a regular napkin. When and where will we, will we be able to buy it? How much will it cost? What are the logistics there? Yeah, so similarly to condoms, I see universities being able to sponsor no naps for students, either distribute them through their dorms as well as through um, health centers. I see condoms as a prevention tool and an empowerment tool. And I want no naps to be similar in that, in that aspect. Now, you sort of touched on this by talking about your personal experience, but has the Me Too movement inspired you? Yeah, very much so. Um, you can only create social change around an issue that's, person, that's personal and pressing in today's society. And if it's not pressing, change cannot occur. So with the Me Too movement, it really created a culture and a social awareness, more so than ever before, of issues pertaining to sexual violence. And when you have that culture, you're able to create change. And so I really want to have my company be a part of the movement and saying enough is enough and really join in the voices. And I've honestly been humbled and honored to have spoken with so many survivors of sexual violence. And, and I like to stress as well that anyone can be affected regardless of gender, sexual orientation, geographic location. And that's really why we're trying to make our company and why I'm making my company so inclusive. That's great, I wanna to touch on that. It's inclusive, this napkin, it's not a gendered at all. I mean, anyone could carry around a simple napkin and that was important to you as well. Yeah, Talk and, about that. yeah so I really wanna put the onus as well as on institutions. I think that the safety of patrons comes first. So we're working with universities, but as well social institutions such as bars and clubs to provide no naps for free for patrons. So individuals have to opt out rather than opt in to use the product. And as well, at full scale, we project our cost to be comparable to traditional napkins, at which point we'll work to have our napkins become the industry standard of what is acceptable in social settings. Wouldn't that be something? That would really be something. Now, finally, what is your message uh, to the women sitting in our audience today? I would say, go for your dream. And NONAP has, and I can get emotional, NONAP has and will forever change me in the aspect that I've been so humbled to have spoken with so many thought leaders that are passionate about combating their own, their own passions. And even we've seen it on this stage today and this past weekend. But I also like to stress that I didn't fall in love with NONAP's product. I fell in love with our mission. And our mission is to empower, educate, and advocate against drug-facilitated sexual assault and crime. And I will do whatever it is in my power to make sure that that mission comes alive. It's wonderful, you're able to, it's wonderful that you're able to take a, a negative experience and turn it into positive change that could, could be a good change for a broad spectrum of people all across the country and maybe even the world. Uh, Donna Sherman, your product and your mission are incredibly important. I am excited to see NoNap grow and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now I'd like to bring onto the stage uh, two other 2018 Mothers of Invention, Maxime Tuckman and Emily Kennedy as well as Jacqueline Birdsall, Senior Engineer for Toyota North America, to help us celebrate the work of these women. First of all, I would like to thank Tina for hosting such an inspiring event. Toyota is proud to honor these mothers of invention, women who demonstrate leadership, entrepreneurship, and innovation to solve the world's problems. 
As we shared yesterday, since the program was introduced in 2012, 22 women have been named Toyota Mothers of Invention. This distinction gives them a platform to shine a light on their causes and use grant dollars to change the lives of women, their communities, and the world. And we see women in the world as the perfect platform for them to tell their stories in an environment where strong women are encouraged and celebrated. Over the past few days, you've met each of our 2018 class. Maxine Tuckman of Caribou, who created an interactive storybook application to allow parents and loved ones to read to their child no matter the geographic distance. It's an especially useful tool for parents on military deployment, and it helps improve the literacy for all children. Emily Kennedy of Marinus Analytics, who is using artificial intelligence and machine learning technology to locate victims of human trafficking and its perpetrators. No longer does law enforcement need to spend hours combing through the web to locate a victim, but can instead upload a photo into facial recognition software and expedite the search. And as we've just heard, Danya Sherman of NoNap, who invented a discreet, gender-neutral drug detection device in a napkin, so that now anyone can prevent a violent crime by using the napkin to detect harmful drugs that could be secretly placed into their drink. And ladies, it is, I am thrilled to share this stage with you. <laughs> and I know what it's like to devote your career to a cause. For the last 20 years, our team has worked to develop Toyota's first production fuel cell vehicle, an all-electric, zero-emission vehicle that is refilled with hydrogen instead of plugged in. Just three years ago, we finally launched it, and we named her the Mirai, which is Japanese for the future. Similarly, these mothers of invention are creating solutions to impact the world and do their part to build a better future for generations to come. Now, I'd like to take a few minutes to show you how our future is brighter because of these innovative women. citizens and we have a responsibility to help each other. Water is the beginning and the foundation of anything and everything. Because we stay abreast of what's emerging technologically, I think that in five or ten years our work will be even more scalable. What keeps me going every day is looking at the various entrepreneurs, the doctors, even health workers who are using click medics to deliver health care to actually care for patients and improve patients' lives. Necessity is the mother of invention. The needs are here. The infrastructure is here. What we're doing is trying to bring those two things together and create innovative solutions. It's not just we're building technology, but we're trying to change systems. We're trying to change the future of how people are fed. That first opportunity to get in the shower, it's transformative. And that's what we see when people come to us. It's like one person goes in and a totally different person comes out. It's really about creating a path where people can empower themselves with temporary shelter as the first step. Right now, Caribou is helping families in 148 countries but we're just scratching the surface. We're working on reading and literacy, but in the future, we want to use the technology to do language learning and tutoring. We truly believe that science is a tool that can solve the world's biggest challenges. We want to give every student the opportunity to experiment so that they can be the change makers of tomorrow. Our ultimate goal for artificial intelligence tools in the human trafficking space it's that detectives can do three clicks and they get the trafficker in handcuffs. So we want to just make this process as quick as possible so we can prevent exploitation, rescue victims, and make a huge impact. The legacy of my company will be one of empowerment, education, and prevention.
It is my great honor to congratulate our Toyota Mothers of Invention in the audience, and especially our 2018 class here with me on stage. Let's give another round of applause.